Hmm. Now, I'm unsure if I'll post this, so I'll say that right at the beginning of this. Um, so I'm actually just kind of doing some crazy experiments to figure out what is the minimum, you know, what and when is the minimum um, delta V I would need to expend in order to get a collision with the moon on the sunlit side, or at least near the terminator, which is the dividing line between the day and night side of something. Uh, so you can see relatively clearly where that terminator is here. Let me just zoom out so you can see what I'm doing. I'm trying to do it in one maneuver. Um, here, so you can see where I'm currently set up to do the maneuver, kind of near that. Um, in, in some respects, it's ideal to, um, like for best oomph uh, for your delta V. Uh, it's best to do a burn when you're closest to the Earth. So I looked at some of those burns you know, close uh, when I'm closest to the Earth. Um, for others, kind of a good, like, Kind of tipping point is to do something near the descending node, particularly if you're trying to correct for inclination, like to get it to zero. Um, you, you know, all, all kinds of things. But also, further out you are, you also get more of a lever arm. Yeah, it's, it's really complicated um, uh, to figure out exactly where the right spot is. That's why one of the reasons where I see advantage is be an experimentalist. So here, you can see it's this huge 80 meters per second delta V cost. Uh, in order to correct this where I currently have it set up. And that would give me a collision just near the Terminator, so it's more Delta V than I probably have to spend, but hey, I've got HyperEdit on hand. And also, still not a, not ideal, because it gets me close to the Terminator here. So I'm going to do just a mostly silent uh, video. I'm not going to focus too much on speaking with this. That's why I may not post it. Um, but, you know, I may as well you know post it if I feel like it and see if it's the kind of thing people find interesting or not. Um, or if, if you don't find kind of just seeing um, me play with this relationship and explain what I'm seeing and what I'm doing, um, you can definitely not watch it. It's totally an option too. Um, so just small amounts of Delta V. So here, if, if you kind of look, um, like I, I always think of this as kind of a, as a, I'm imagining the graph of a function and the derivative of those functions at all times. So um, if something I say or do doesn't make sense to you, apologies, but that may be why. So I think in calculus. So. Um, here, you know, I'm further away from the moon. You can see yeah, it's a pretty decent distance. And then as I am spending less delta V, so toward this is moving from a negative number towards zero, I'm getting a closer approach. And then, so that's basically the closest, that point is probably the closest approach to the center of the planet um, because it you know, impacts it. Um, and it it's, has the least purple showing here, the least line. So that's, you can tell it's closest to the center. And then if I go past that, then it comes back out. So you can see that this is like this is a minima for like the ideal point for how much delta v of that in this with just that one variable being modified, the partial derivative, uh, to get closer. But because this is non-ideal, it's not the value I want. Um, I fiddle with other things. So if I spend a little bit of delta v here, you know, it gives me. If I burn less, it pulls me away. So this is a pretty obvious. The more I spend here, the closer it gets me to the surface. But it's still along this terminator line. So even though I'm getting an impact a little earlier, it's still along the same kind of non-ideal line that divides the day and night side of the planet, or the, sorry, of the moon. So that is obviously non-ideal as well. Uh, so and also that's spending more delta v, which I oh, you know, so spending more of what I don't have. So instead, I'll look at the variable of time. So I've currently got it set to 400 second increments. So this means, what if I burn 400 seconds later? What result do I get? Okay, and so for the same expenditure of delta v. Um, so it looks like it's it's advantageous to burn later uh, when I click that. See if I if I burned earlier and for the same delta v in the same dimensions, it's not as good. And so here, so I'm kind of looking at the partial derivatives individually of what results I get. So this is this is definitely the one that gives me the best value because uh, if I want to say keep uh, if I want to minimize this value, which is what I'm trying to minimize, and also just kind of. Um, Kind of a soft value. I can't, you know. Obviously, you can see as I describe it, but it's something I can't obviously describe in the numbers of this. But I want to be on the daytime side versus the dark side. So, okay. So if I burn later, which costs me nothing, right? That's just waiting. Just literally five minutes more of waiting. So that gets me uh, closer, which is not what I want uh, necessarily. And so um, I'm willing to, as long as it impacts the surface somewhere, I'm happy. Um, bright side would be more ideal. But so that means I can um, trade off burning later for spending less delta V, substantially less delta V as you can see. So this gets us basically where we were before, but spending a bit less energy to get those results. And now I'm just going to kind of take a quick look at the uh, partial derivatives of these. Just look, okay, where is the minimum there? So it's moved just a little bit, 
Um, that number is, I think, just a little bit different by 0.1 or 0.2 than where we were before. And so here, if I spend less, I get just the basic impact and rinse and repeat. So let's try again. One more tick that way. Yep, way less delta V expended. Okay. And so I kind of go back towards where I want it to be. Another tick of time. Yep, same thing there. So I can feel this changing. I'm moving closer to the local minima because I'm getting less of this for each click I make of that. One, two, three, four clicks. One, one, two, th you know, see, I'm getting, I can, it, it's very, very obvious. I'm trying to explain what I'm seeing, right? It's one click of this is saving me less delta V each time. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a couple clicks all at once because ultimately I'm not, you know, optimizing or trying to find some I specifically ideal numbers. Um, no, so that still moves me away from the planet, but also notice how where I'm hitting is a little better now. I'm getting over to the bright side, so really here I'm, I'm just in luck. So in practice, I'm coming from the Earth. The most obvious way to get to the moon would be kind of heading closer directly to it, rather than this kind of swing, honestly, which, which one is inbound and which is outbound? I think that's outbound, yeah. So I'm coming from here to impact the moon. Um, so if I wanted to hit the bright side, this is this is obviously the side that would be easier to hit, the, the side that is facing towards the Earth. So um, a more ideal time to do this launch, this is just a test, you know, this is just a test, um, a simulation in practice, would be to do if when this side is bright, which would mean um, where the opposite side, you know, Basically, you can imagine where and when you'd be launching on the Earth to make that possible. And that's, I don't know of a mod um, or anything, any planner that would look at the phases, the kind of the light phases to help you with that. But that's what you'd have to think about to decide when to launch if you're specifically trying to hit a bright, the, you know, the, the lit side of, of, of the moon. Um, it gets even more complicated imagining for other planets because you have to imagine how they move. Um, and right now, I'm just looking at the phases, you know, how which side of the moon is lit and unlit um, at the moment of my launch. You know, two or three days later when I actually get here, it's going to be much different. Um, five days maybe, who knows? I'm doing a kind of a minimum energy transfer, so less delta V means more time, which I'm totally fine with. There are not people aboard this craft who are going to get concerned by the, the length of our trip. Okay. Um, there is the concern of battery. I do have some small solar panels, and I can position this Agena to minimize if, if this number might have been changing through the video, for all I know, because the craft is you know, tumbling in relation to the sun, so it's going to generate a different amount of power at different times. So I'm just moving this until it no longer keeps keep getting me closer to the center of the moon. It looks like about there. And now let's see, how much delta V can I get away with? And that's, you know, only a tiny bit more would get me there, so that's good enough. Now let's see a tick, a tick, a tick. So that's making that just a little bit more impactful of the moon. See there, it's pretty much, it's, I'm not getting any improvement by changing time now. Okay, so let me just look at the other variables. See this radio one isn't really, you know, for obvious, for probably mathematical, with mathematically obvious reasons, it's not going to help me at all during this because, you know, full meters per second really doesn't have a huge impact for me. I don't think I'd have to spend um, ultimately, I could include it in my final optimization, when you know, which might reduce me by you know, a fraction of a meter per second because a squared plus b squared plus c squared equals you know, x squared or a squared, whatever. C. Trigonometry, all three of these add up. So a, a change in something that's near zero, even though that's a one, it had no impact on the, the square, the, the, the root of the square of all three of those. Anyway, uh, so nope, that's not going to get me much more delta v. Nope. So that's pretty much what I need to spend. Uh, to get an impact, and that's not the worst impact. You know, it's going to be a lot from the side, but you know, if I burn my Agena like somewhere here, I'm going to you know, droop down, give myself a little more time, etc. So coming in at a side angle like this isn't the worst. It'd be more ideal to like if I had the extra juice to come down at it more vertically, but you know, whatever, I'll I'll be fine. So that means two hours from now is the ideal time to burn. So now I can see where that was. So that was, you know, that was me just going through the process of trying to figure out what is an ideal burn. In practice, I'm probably, because um, I didn't note down the, the detailed numbers. Um, here, let me, you know, I just uh, turn this to the more powerful version. Oh, you can see the Earth as it goes away from us. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to get myself pointed in the direction of, of the burn we're going to want to do. 
Um, see, I don't know. See, I just find the craft just looks more beautiful and realistic, you know, to me. Like, I brighten my screen more than kind of mid-contrast, so therefore it looks different in the YouTube video than as uh, as I see it. But I think this looks the best because the, the contrast of the lit and the unlit side of the craft looks much nicer. But again, for videos, this probably looks better because it's much more clear. You can you get a much more clear view of the craft rather than having to squint or scrub around in the video to see what the heck is going on on my craft. This just has it lit nicely all the time. Okay, so that points me where I want. And I cheat to kill persistent rotation. And then I'll let, I'll let us all look at the nice earth as it recedes from our craft. So that's, this is the total craft's mass TLI, you know, uh, translunar injection. That's how much mass we threw away from the earth. And it's just gonna keep getting less and less as we spend the fuel, then we dump the Agena as we head towards the moon. So I'm just going to warp towards this point and then start burning my RCS. Actually, I will shut down. Oh, I'm in warp, so I can't shut down the engine while in warp, fair enough. Now what distance, so at this distance, the clouds start to do that. Um, I didn't see that happening in 1.1 when I was doing some testing of RVE, which is, uh, which would be pretty, which would be awesome. If the if those layers kind of, kind of get set permanently rather than having to be mathematically calculated which layer um, of which texture is above or below the other ones. Also, this node time isn't super critical because I was jumping by hundreds of seconds. So yeah, this is still going to be fine. But what I'm going to do oh, now that I'm sorry, <laughs> jumping around. Uh, now that I'm out of warp, I'm going to shut down that engine to make sure I don't waste my ignition. Uh, quick saving does nothing because I'm in a simulation. Uh, it'd be kind of nice to be able to do that. I mean, if you're paying a lot for a simulation with a curable construction time, it would be nice to be able to get, um, you know, be able to quick save and stuff. But I think quick save is how, apparently, how it actually simulates stuff. So it looks like I'm probably not going to have enough delta V in this pack. But in practice, I was really far away from the ideal inclination. So fair enough. I probably should have had a bigger pack of uh, maybe brought more hydrazine with myself or written a better script or done a better ascent to use uh, to have a closer to zero relative inclination because that's that's really helpful for getting a direct uh, descent to the moon. But yeah, it looks like these values are reducing. I'm just going to be left with a little. So if this was a realistic, um, this is kind of my real final locked in mission, I might have to make the choice of expending some of the, some of the RCS in this in order to complete this maneuver, uh, which would be a real shame or maybe correct a bit of this maneuver at the last minute when I'm near the moon using the Agena engine, which would be pretty complex. And you know, some people might find that fun. Um, I might find that fun once in a while, but for the video, I'm just going to hyper edit wh whatever little bit of Delta V I end up needing once this RCS, uh, once this hydrazine is expended. Um, and actually, yeah, just before it's expended, I think, because I'm going to want a little bit of control left in this so I can point my craft um, for that final burn where I expend the last, you know, kilometer or two per second I have left in the Agena, which is the whole reason I'm bringing it along towards the moon. So thanks for watching. Um, if I I'll probably post this, uh, just, yep, it's perfectly optional. Uh, maybe I'll uh, mention it as an optional video because some people, you know, I guess that's true of every single one of my videos, every video on YouTube, but some people might, not, uh, might or might not find um, kind of the description of how these numbers work and how they relate to different mathematical functions, or at least how I think of them relating to various mathematical functions interesting and some may not. Um, so yeah, thumbs up, thumbs down, comments, always appreciated, you know, because I I do tons of stuff behind the scenes, in front of the scenes, and kind of what people's suggestions or comments or up thumbs and down thumbs are. I suggest what parts I should have on video and what parts I shouldn't. So let me know. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.